If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to Luke 14. Luke chapter 14. And I'd like to start reading at verse 16. And, and I'm sorry that I don't have just two or three scriptures like I normally have, but we're going to read for just a little bit. Okay? So don't get don't get um, too excited. <laughs> Luke 14 and verse 16. Then said he unto them, to him, Jesus is talking, he said, A certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servant at supper time to say to them, to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all, everybody say they all, they all. They all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. It's kind of weird, isn't it? How many of you buy property and you ain't seen it? <laughs> that's, that's kind of different, isn't it? Most of the time we go see it and then we buy it and we won't know what we're getting. So he said, I, I pray that thou have me excused. And another said, uh, I have bought five yoke of oxen. If I say ten oxen. Yeah, oxen. And go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. Kind of the same way, isn't it? You buy animals without looking at them? <coughs> no. Brother John, you can tell us that you most of the time won't look at them before you buy them. You said you had somebody come and look at your rabbits. That's the way you do things, you know. You go look at it before you, you buy it. And another one said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came back and Show his Lord these things. And then the master of the house being angry said to his servant. Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city. And bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And yet there is room. And the Lord said unto his servant, go out into the highways and hedges. And compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of these men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whatsoever doth not bear, and whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower setteth not down first, and counteth the cost whether he hath sufficient to finish it? Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish or what king going to make war against another king setteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him and cometh again against him with 20,000? Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassador and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise. Everybody say, so likewise. So likewise. Whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt hath lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. I just want to use something simple for a title today. Three classes of people. Three classes of 
people. God bless you. You may be seated. I have to admit to you that I have been to some great feast in my lifetime. Two weeks ago at my family reunion, we had a feast. I've never seen so much food and such a variety of food. And I'm sure there was at least 12 baskets left. I know there was a, a bunch of food. And we all know about the Thanksgiving dinners, don't we? Christmas dinners, um, Christmas suppers, Thanksgiving suppers. You know, you, uh, how many of y'all you go eat Thanksgiving dinner at one place and then you've got to be somewhere else to eat another big dinner at supper time? You know, uh, that's kind of uh, hurtful, isn't it, uh, to the body? It's kind of hurtful to go to two big meals in one day. Uh, but these special meals at Thanksgiving and Christmas and family reunions pale in comparison to the meal that I received from the hand of the Lord Jesus in salvation. Amen. Think of it like this. At the, Lord, at, at the Lord's table, there's this, there's this huge pan of forgiveness. Way more than enough to forgive me of every sin. Then there's this uh, super large tray filled with grace and mercy. And sitting next to that is the largest bowl you've ever seen of joy. In fact, it's unmeasurable and unspeakable. Then there's some blessings running over the top of another bowl. It looks like it's been pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And then there are platters of his love sitting all over the table. Listen, it is such a blessing to know a God who is always more than enough. He's God. And this parable is all about these precious uh, this precious invitation to come to the table of salvation. Why, when God has got the table set with all of this great stuff, would anybody refuse to go to the feast? Think about it. Why would anybody refuse the goodness of God and His mercy that endureth forever? Why would anybody want to refuse the blessings Put in a big old basket or put it into our lives. Shake down, press together, and run it over. Why would we want to not take that? Why would we want not want to take advantage of these great things? The platter's all full of God's goodness. Wow. Why, why would we not want to partake of that? Jesus said, come, for all things are now ready. The host, that's what he said in this text. Come for everything is ready. Have you thought about this invitation that he gave here? This was not the first time that, that the Lord gave the invitation to come. Didn't the Lord have Noah standing out? Maybe, maybe you're standing on the game plank or on top of the ark saying, Come, for all things are now ready. You want to be saved? Come to the ark. Why would people not want to be saved? Think about it. Well, it's never rained before. God's never come before, but He's coming. Oh, He came before one time as a baby, didn't He? But He's coming back this time, amen? Yes. Didn't the prophet Isaiah also give the invitation in Isaiah 1, 18 and 19? He said, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Verse 19. And if you be willing and obedient, you shall what? Eat the, Eat the good of the land. Wow. God's got some great promises for us if we will just come. 
It looks to me like God doesn't want anybody to be lost. Amen? Yeah. This invitation, it, it, it's so simple. Just come. Just come. Well, I don't have clothes to wear. I've just got what I've got on my body. Just come. Just come. Well, what's people going to think about me? Who cares? Just come. Just come. Well, I've got this wrong in my life. We're just like the Bible describes here. People come up with all kinds of excuses. Just come. And man, it's simple. This is a solid invitation. The Lord has done everything necessary to make salvation available. Everything. He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried. Then he rose again from the grave. From the grave. And now he says, all you have to do is come. But you know what? The people in this text would not come to the feast. They made excuses. Can I say this? Sometimes people have excuses that sound reasonable. Huh? Reckon Noah had anybody with any excuses in his day? Well, no, I would get on the ark, but, you know, I just can't stand being shut in. I'm claustrophobic. I tell you, no, I would, but you know what? I'm, I'm really allergic to animals. And being shut in with those animals for 40 days, are y'all with me? Yep. Being shut in with those animals for 40 days, my sinuses would go crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going somewhere. I can't go to church. No, let's go on. Let's, everybody say, let's go on, Brother Grace. No, I would go. But you don't even know where you're going. You don't even know. There's no way to even steer this ark. You don't know where you're going or when we're coming back if we are coming back. Then you need to ask yourself a question. Would you rather die? Huh? Then get on the ark. Would you rather die? You know, they really didn't believe what Noah was preaching. And so isn't that the way it is with our world today? They really don't believe what we're preaching, that the Lord has prepared all of this stuff. And y'all, I have to admit, sometimes the ministry has come across the wrong way, and there's just a few that we're going to let me say. Huh? It's not us letting anybody. It's God. He said, whosoever will, let him come. In our day, the sinners are saying, well, I would go to church, but there's too many hypocrites in that church. <laughs> Did y'all know hell's going to be full of them? That's right. Huh? It is. Hell's going to be full of hypocrites, and you're going to... Oh, wait. If you don't make a change in your life, you're going to be there with them. That's right. Come on. Well, preacher, I'd get in church... But I'm just afraid that I can't live a Christian life. Let me tell you this. You can't live for Jesus anyway. He has to live through you. Amen. 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 Isn't that what Galatians 2 and 20 tells us? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Preacher, you know, I'd go to church and I'd get saved, but, but there's just so much I'd have to give up. Like what? Right. Amen. Like what? I mean, oh well, uh, there's so much money to be made and there's so much work to do that I just don't have the time to give up to live for God or go to church. You know, Jesus covers that real good in Mark 8, 36 and 37. He said, For what shall it profit a man if he should what? gain the whole world? Gain all the money in the world. Gain everything there is to gain, but lose his soul. Or what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? 
There's a whole lot of people exchanging stuff, but they're losing their soul. And then there's people that say, well, I've just committed too many sins and uh, for God to ever forgive me. I've already quoted it. He said, whosoever will, let him come. In the Bible, he forgave harlots. He forgave murderers. He forgave thieves, tax collectors, liars. In fact, John 6.37 tells us that all who came to him he in no wise will cast out. Wow. That pretty much includes everybody here and everybody out there, doesn't it? Amen. Then there are those sinners who say, well, I've got this excuse that I tell you what, I'm not going to do it today, but I'll come later. Too busy to come to God. But not too busy to live for the devil. Huh? I mean, there's only two, y'all. That's right. We're either living for God or we're living for the devil. Well, I'm not that bad. Yes, you are. You're a sinner. Yes, amen. Come on. It, well, I, you know, I'm not as bad as somebody else. Yeah, but what's the standard? God. Yeah, right. Amen. Huh? It's not you're comparing yourself to somebody else. When it's comparison going on, we're, we're comparing ourselves to God and He was perfect. We can't be perfect. But if we come to God, He will make us perfect at that day. Amen. We're not, everybody say we're not perfect yet. Okay. Maybe those people in this text, they made their excuse why they couldn't come. One used the excuse of material possessions. I bought a piece of property and I need to go see it. He's the picture of the sinner who is so materially minded that he refuses the call of the gospel so that he can accumulate more earthly possessions. I want to tell you something. The most important thing in life is not about how much I'm worth or you're worth. It's not even about do I have enough stored up for tomorrow in case something happens. The real thing is, am I saved? Am I saved? You need to ask yourself, am I saved? If the Lord was to come today, am I saved? Then you look at this, another, another one came. And he, he couldn't come because he, he had bought ten oxen or five pairs of oxen. Without, without trying them out. And he needed to go plow to see if they were really good. Y'all, there's nothing wrong with making money. Amen. amen. Right. I need an amen every now and then. Um, just don't put your career or making money ahead of God and end up losing your soul. That's right. Amen. amen. The last excuse in, the, in this text was the man was a newlywed. Oh boy, how? Oh, yeah. He was a newlywed. He wanted to spend time with his new wife. Um, this, is, this is really simple. You know, when you do a study on this, the custom was in those days that you could not, you could not take part in any extra activities for the first year of marriage to show your devotion to your wife. So it was a reasonable excuse. Except. He was not showing his devotion to God. Who's supposed to be first in our life? Can I ask? God. God. He was putting everything else in front of his relationship with God. Even his wife. Thank God you've got a good wife. You've married a good wife. Amen. But. Hopefully your wife is on board with you as being a Christian, a child of God first. Amen. Amen. We should never place personal relationships ahead of God. There, there are, uh, I think there's just way too many sinners and Christians placing family ahead of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. 
Whatever it is that keeps you from feasting with Jesus, you need to realize that it's not worth what you think. Amen. Nothing is worth losing your soul over. Everything in this world is going to vanish. My challenge to you today is come to Jesus and make things right with Him. Amen. So we know from reading this text that those who were invited refused to come. But the host was determined to fill his house and his table with guests. So he sent his servants out to the surrounding countryside for those whom nobody cared for. I'm about ready to preach now. Come on. Don't you think it's interesting that the host sent out his servants to the highways and the hedges? Jesus sends his servants, us, yes, amen. Christians, to the poor, the lame, the blind, the maimed, and the halt. I said, Jesus sends Christians. Amen. Yes, amen. I hope you're hearing me right now. Jesus sends us out to bring those poor people in who could never pay him back. Amen. Yes. Isn't that a portrait of his grace? He wants to reach down to men and women who don't have the means of repayment. God won't ever ask you for a repayment. He just asks that you come. Right. Amen. Jesus sends his servants, the Christians, to the maimed, the twisted, the deformed, those whom society feels uncomfortable with. Listen, there are a lot of people with not just deformed bodies, but their thinking is twisted. They are bent toward sin. Sin will twist you. People can have a twisted nature. The Bible calls this iniquity. Their mind is twisted in believing that they need to pierce their body. They need to tattoo their body. Their twisted minds tell them that they can no longer use their body in its natural state, but they must involve themselves in the unnatural acts of homosexuality and all types of different affairs. But God sent His servants. Everybody say, God sent us. To condemn them. Uh -uh. No. No. Nope. You know what our job is? To love everybody. Mm. Now that may be part of it. Here's what our job is. Come on, go with me. Come go with me to the house. To the house of what? I want to take you to the feast. Because you ain't never eaten like you've eaten in God's house. You ain't never eaten like you've eaten at God's table. Right. You know, instead a lot of times we just want to condemn them. We don't want their kind at our church. Yeah, we do. That's right. We want all kinds at our church. Amen. Y'all sitting too far back here. Y'all need to move up. <laughs> I'm having to walk too back, too far back. But God calls every one of us as Christians, as saints, come on, yeah. to be servants, to go into the highways and hedges and to get all of those that nobody even wants. Good preaching, Brother Grace. It's really quiet in here. Y'all not helping me much. Go get those who are twisted up. You know, those that look, you know, they don't have on no suit. Who cares? You don't have to wear no suit just because I've been raised by this crazy way that, that you know, <laughs> don't mean it. Oh, Brother Grace, hold on now. Wait just a minute. Y'all, I can't help it. That's the way. I, I was taught to wear my best to church, so I've got on my best. Yes. Amen. Amen. You should wear your best to church. Amen. Amen. Do I need to talk about all that? Not really. Because if we're really in love with God, we're going to do the best that we can for Him, aren't we? Right. Yes. Uh, God sent His servants to the main. He loved them and he won't ever stop loving the sinner. Amen. Amen. 
Jesus is so clear on this. And I quote it again. Whosoever will, let him come. Thank God. Hallelujah. He wants to save all from their sins. Yes. Then he's, the Bible says he sent, he sent his servants to the halt, those who were crippled, people who were unable to get around on their own. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm really about to preach here. Jesus wants us, his servants, to go get those who have to have help. Man. He wants them to come to the supper. Yes. He wants them to come to the feast. He wants to give them something they never experienced before. He wants to help them. Amen. He wants to give them blessings. He wants to save them. Amen. Yes. But wait, could this also mean those who are not just crippled in their feet, but those have, who have been crippled in many other ways? They're crippled because somebody stole their car. They don't have no way to church. Yes. Huh? Amen. That was real simple, wasn't it? Yeah. But what if they never had a car? That's right. They're crippled, aren't they? Yes. I don't want to embarrass Brother Charles back there. But Brother Charles, thank God you have a lawnmower. That you can drive. He don't have a car, but he has a lawnmower. And some of y'all, you've got better, and you still don't get oh, home. Wait. Oh, Ooh. me. Come on. Come on. Maybe, maybe people are, are crippled because of divorce. They're hurt. They're, they're crippled. You know what we're supposed to do? No. Go get them. Yes. You can see they're hurting. That's right. Even in our church. They're not even in the highways and hedges. But even in our churches, we see people that are hurting. We need to go get them. You know, really, when we stop and think about it, really, next Sunday, our church ought to be full. Because we all know a whole lot of people that's hurting. Can I say this? And it's... He said, go quickly, and I'm getting out of order here. Y'all right. And compel them to come. Use force. Use force to get them to come. Y'all saw him, how I got him by the arm. He, he probably didn't want to come up here, but I, I got him by the arm. See? I used force. Sometimes you might have to use force to get them to come. I mean, y'all know you can ask somebody and, and you can ask them wrong. I don't guess you'd want to go to church today, would you? Yeah. <laughs> You're shaking your head no all the time. You need to be saying, I guess you'd like to come to church today, wouldn't you? Huh? That's the way you do it. And you force uh, Y'all, I don't mean beat them over the head or nothing like that, but I mean kind of be stern about it and say, I need you to go to church with me. Tell you what, if you'll come, I'll take you out to dinner today and buy your dinner. Because mm. after all, there's a great feast that the Lord wants you to sit down at, and He wants to feed you more than I can. What happens? What happens if you bring them to church and they get what you got? Well, maybe hold it, wait, just wait, wait, hold it, wait. Maybe we don't want them to have what you got. No. Maybe we want them to have more of what you got. Oh, God, help me. Oh, Jesus. We want them to experience what we have experienced. We have experienced the Lord for ourselves. And we know His power. We know what He can do, how He can change us. And we want them to experience that, don't we? Yes, amen. Wow. People are crippled because of the death of a loved one. They're hurt. There are people, so many people, who are unable to get around on their own. And God has blessed us with cars and the ability to talk to people, and yet we pass them up on our way to church. Come on. 
Mm. I'm not just preaching to you. This is, this is going to me too. I had to preach it to me first thing this morning. That's kind of hard to swallow sometimes. Because God has blessed all of us abundantly. But there are all of those who are hurting. Those that are crippled. That God wants us to reach. Listen to me. It doesn't matter what state of cripple they're in. They cannot get to God on their own. They need somebody. They need us. They need us Christians. There are so many this morning crippled by drugs and alcohol and pornography and yes. prostitution. They are bound. They need us to bring them to Jesus. They need those chains broken. This yes, morning. amen. amen. The host Jesus, he sent his servants out to the blind. He sends us out to people who are trapped in their own little world of darkness. They do not possess the resources to get to the church. They can't come to the feast by themselves. They need somebody to guide them. They need somebody to take them to the light. The fact is, the host God Almighty is ready to illuminate the darkness for them. Yes. First of all, God is concerned that they be led to the Lord in salvation. Amen. And secondly, God may be just ready to heal their bodies so that they can see. Yes. Amen. We need miracles in the church. Amen. Amen. Thank God that God wants to do miracles in the church. He hadn't quit performing miracles. He's still the same God Thank yesterday, Jesus. today, yeah. and forever. He still heals blinded eyes. Yes. So after all, these servants brought in all the wrecks of humanity that they can find, the Bible says the master's table or his house still had room. So now he sends his servant to the hedges or the hedgerows and highways looking for the off-scarring of humanity, those of whom no one else wanted to have anything to do with. The homeless, the wandering, the dirty, the unkept. In other words, the host sent them to find anyone and everyone in the streets or in the hedgeways, those who were covered with cardboard trying to keep themselves warm, those who were barely alive. This wealthy host was determined that his house would be filled. If the intended guest would not come, then God said, I'm going to fill it one way or the other. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. So it is with God, He calls all to come to Him. Yet many refuse the gospel. But if I can tell you this, we better be careful. Because there could come a time when he no longer knocks on the door. That's right. The host told his servants, go out quickly. Compel them to come. That means use force. Listen, God sees this. He sees them out on this call. Then it's an urgent call. The question is, do we see it that way? Do we see that it's urgent? Do we as Christians realize the urgency of the hour that we're living in? We don't have that much time left. Amen. Thank God people were talking about Donald Trump. And they were talking about uh, the great president that he is. We were talking about it, I guess it was Friday night or yesterday. It was yesterday. What, we had some friends come over and we were, we were talking about the, the hour that we're in. I said, it's just that God has just given us a little bit more time to get our loved ones in. Amen. I believe that. Really? But we don't know how much time. There's, right. there's uh, uh, rockets pointed at us. There are those who are wanting to fight against us and come against us. But I can tell you this. We have this moment. We have this moment to get our families in, our friends in. We have the opportunity to bring them to the house of the Lord and set them down at the feast of the Lord. 
I know one of these days there's going to be a great feast at the end time. And God wants every one of us there plus all of those out there. But you know, even right now, they could be enjoying the presence of the Lord. They could be enjoying the blessings of the Lord. All we got to do is just go get them. He said, come. So I've mentioned the sinner. I've mentioned the saints or the Christians. There's another category. Becoming a disciple of the Lord. Becoming a disciple. Jesus tells us that there are five things to becoming a disciple. Verse 26 tells us that we must love Him above everything else. Yes. If you're going to be His disciple. Number two, a true disciple must take up his cross daily. Amen. I'm going to say something right here. There are a whole lot of Christians who are not cross bearers. Y'all, it is possible to be saved, but to leave your cross unborn. You do that by living the Christian life. You go to church. You claim Jesus as your, save, as your Savior. But you never go any deeper in God. It's a surface thing. Jesus never tells us we won't be saved. But he does tell us, tell us that we would not be his disciple, didn't he? What? Three times he tells us that. You won't be my disciple. You can't be my disciple. Number three, a real true disciple will follow Jesus. That means we must get engaged in the work of the Lord. Walk as He walked. Speak as He spoke. Love as He loved. Yield to Him and allow Him to live His life through us. Number four, a true disciple will count the cost. That means that we must weigh out our worldly attachments against the demands of bearing the cross. Bearing your cross is placing everything on the altar of sacrifice. Number five, the true disciple will fulfill his purpose. Y'all, and I got to tell you, what is our purpose? Our purpose is to show Christ to the world. Amen. <coughs> what Jesus is showing us in this parable is anyone can come to Jesus and be saved. And they will miss hell. Amen. Yes. There are many who are saved and know that they are saved. But they also know that as Christian, there is a Christian life that is deeper than what they're having or what they're doing right now. Amen. Yet they seem to be, and we seem to be so content to be far less than what God wants for us. I want to tell you this. Salvation will cost you nothing. Amen. Amen. It's free. Amen. But being a disciple will cost you everything. Yes. Amen. So in closing today, I want to say this. There may be those who are sitting here right now. And you need to come to God for salvation. Maybe this message today has awakened a desire to be saved in your heart. Please don't put that off. You need God. Amen. Perhaps there are Christians here today. You need to reevaluate your life and get busy winning the lost. Yes, amen. Then maybe there's some who want to be his disciple. Yes. Want to forget everything else? Want to be totally sold out to him. Amen. Want to be a cross bearer. Let me tell you, it's time we all got off the fence. Amen. And start doing everything that we can for Jesus Christ. Amen. I want us to stand. <clears throat> The title of my message was three classes of people. Can I tell you about a fourth class?
me just tell you about a fourth class. Those who won't come. Those who won't come. We've invited, we've begged, we've pleaded. As Christians, we studied the Word, looked at the Word, devoured the Word, ate the Word, and still, we won't do all that God wants us to do. There's a fourth class of people, I feel like, those who wouldn't heed wouldn't give in and absolutely said no. They rejected God. You remember the very first ones? I read about them in the beginning. They would come. They had too many excuses. They would come. There's a fourth class that are just like that. All kinds of excuses. Well, there's always tomorrow. No, there's no. We don't have a promise of tomorrow. Let me ask you this. I don't want you to be in that fourth class. I don't want nobody here to be in that fourth class of the Lord doesn't need him. He wants us all to be saved. He said, whosoever will. No matter what you've been doing. Well, I'll have to quit this and I'll have to, I'll have to quit that. Are you trying to be perfect before you come to God? You can't be perfect. Amen. Are you, are you trying to get your life all straightened out before you come to God? Why don't you come to God and let Him straighten out? Amen. Yes, amen. Well, if I could just quit my drugs, if I could just quit my drinking, why don't you let God help you with that? Amen. Wow. Could we come? Could we all just come? Could, I know we're somewhere in one of these classes today. 